Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video, I know school is starting for a lot of us, so I'm gonna lay out kind of my FLL schedule. So those of you that are new to First Lego League, you can kind of see how I map out our season, so that way there's no surprises and we can be fully prepared for our season. So if you wanna see that, stay with me. So don't mind me if I look down, I'm just looking at my notes because I don't really have all this memorized, but here we go. I'm going to go ahead and map out, and I know everybody's schedule is different, so if your schedule is different, maybe you can kind of, you know, move things around and see how much time I'm allowing. You know, you can figure this out for yourselves, what works for you, what doesn't, but I'm just showing you what my schedule is like. So if you kind of want to see where things fall as far as dates and how long we spend on something, then by all means, go for it. Okay, so here we go. We start school um, on August 7th, and our qualifier is going to be on November the 9th. November 9th. So here is kind of our schedule. In fact, let me bring my laptop up here so you can, I don't have to keep looking down. So our first week of school is going to be this week. August 7th. So I'm going to make sure that we register this week. So those of you that, you know, as soon as you get into school, looking at your timeline here, I would say register your team as soon as possible. That way you can get your mat and models and put them together so your team is ready to go. Um, so registration first week. Um, and then um, since we're starting school on August the 7th, I'm going to make sure now, those of you that have returning teams, I guess you wouldn't have to work necessarily worry about this timeline, but if I'm gonna have new teams, I'm gonna have those teams in place by the end of August. So I just wanna make sure I have my team put together so that way we can get going with what we have to do as far as practicing and projects and things like that. So I'm giving myself a month to get a new team together so we're ready. Um, by August 15th, we should have our mats and models, and I, we should be able to start building and completing those models so we can practice our robot game. Um, by August 31st, and I know, you know, by the end of August, they should have already, you know, figured out their team, but I want my teams to already know what kind of robot they're going to have and figure out the design and get started on getting this robot put together so we can practice it. So not only do I want to have a timeline of finishing, you know, picking my team by the end of August or that first month, but also have them know what kind of robot they're going to use so we can begin to practice. Um, September 15th, I want my teams to have already picked out what is going to be their innovative project. So we're going to have to do some research, figure out Obviously, this year it's City Shaper. So before then, we should be figuring out problems, be talking to professionals, and then figuring out by September 15th, what is their problem going to be? What are they going to try to solve? I want them to by September 22nd, so a week after they have picked what their problem is going to be, I want them to pick how they're going to present that in their project. So for some of you, you guys do skits, you might do a song. So for my teams, I want them to know what is their presentation format going to be. Very huge. Um, if you guys don't already do this, I think it's a fantastic uh, idea. Shout out to Richard Sisk if you're watching. He puts together every year a scrimmage where if you register, you can go to a scrimmage. So your teams, especially if they're brand new, they can get the feel of what it's going to be like for the robot game. It's only a robot game scrimmage, so it gives teams an idea of, you know, their programs, uh, if there's anything to go back and fix. It's awesome because it gives the kids just that pressure feeling without really necessarily feeling pressure. But I think the biggest thing is it allows teams to look at their time, look at how much, you know, how much they can accomplish in that two and a half minutes. So if you guys don't have scrimmages, you should think about, you know, getting together with different schools. Uh, those of you at home school, just trying to get 
involved in some type of scrimmage before your qualifier because I think it's the number one thing that has helped my team each year. And that's going to be at the end of October, usually in that area. Um, I want my teams to have their presentation boards done by November 6th. I mean, everything put on there. We should not be doing any attaching. We should not be any doing any finding out stuff. I mean, the board should be done by November 6th. So that way, when our, our qualifier is on November 9th, they're all done and ready and there's no scrambling. Um, the number one thing I don't like to do is I don't like to scramble last minute where things are just chaotic. People are running around everywhere. I like to finish early so that way we can calmly go over things and not feel like, you know, our brains are going a million directions. So hopefully you guys, you know, you, you can apply this to maybe your schedule, but it's going to be one of those things where you have to feel it out each year because sometimes each year you're going to have different students and there really isn't a carbon copy of, you know, this is the perfect schedule. This is just something I found that works and then you adjust it. If the presentation, you know, you feel like you need more time, you start it early. Um, you know, I have had teams that have used the same robot they used the previous year, so we don't necessarily have to worry about that. So there's a lot of um, factors involved in your decision making, but ultimately, I've kind of laid out a, a skeleton, you know, schedule for you to follow, and then you can tell me how that works. It's an exciting time because it's, you know, the school year is going to begin. So already I'm starting to get, you know, uh, things registered for. And then I, we get to purchase the, the mat and models tomorrow. So I'm excited to get started. So hopefully that, you know, helped those of you that, you know, first year coaches who need some type of, you know, guideline on your, your scheduling. And then obviously your practices will fall into in between all those things too. So if you're wondering about practices, um, it depends on your student schedule. Um, my students practice somewhere in the area of two to three times a week and sometimes in the beginning of the school year that might be for an hour and then as we get closer to the scrimmages and qualifier it might be two hours. So it's going to have to kind of depend on your students and their schedule and how much practice do you guys think you need. Okay. All right, guys, if you got any questions, shoot me a question down in the comment section. I promise to answer it. Okay. I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm out.